welcome. I'm Lauren Kine with Real Estate's Next Level Education and the host of the Next Level Training Series. Thanks for joining us today as we delve into growing your personal real estate practice. This week's topic is identifying market segments with Facebook and Google Marketing. Although a large portion of your practice is likely coming from your friends, your family, your social network, past clients, and referrals from those groups, we're also finding an increasing percentage of customers that are checking us out online. And I could have made a program step-by-step -step on how to build a complete Facebook and Google remarketing platform in this video. I realized that would be a four-hour program, and Facebook and Google change their interfaces so quickly to be outdated. So I'm going to carefully go through laying out the theory and the steps in a more practical and concise version. Today, business is really one on, online. Do you realize that 66% of sellers contact only one agent before hiring one? One agent. Why? Because, let's be honest, it's painful talking to us. 70% of online consumers work with the first agent they actually have a conversation with. And I mean an actual conversation. I'm not talking about emails back and forth, because they're going to get those from 5, 6, 10 agents. So winning in today's market means being in front of the people first online and then creating a connection with them so that you can have that conversation and convert them to working with you. The first banner ad, by the way, was created about 20 years ago, but the public learned to ignore banner ads. They stopped working, and this is called banner blindness. We are overloaded with advertising, so the click-through rates of these ads, the effectiveness of these ads, have really plummeted. But in the last few years, there's been a resurgence, and that's because ad platforms have given us as businesses, the ability to deliver relevant ads that are targeted to people based on their behaviors and based on their interests. And these are led by Facebook and Google. Now, before we get too far into setting up Facebook and Google ad campaigns and how to select target audiences, I want to make sure all of you check out your online profile. Why? Let me ask you this. Who knows what percentage of sales in real estate are as a result of someone who already likes and trusts you? Anybody? Yeah, it's around, that's right. It's around 64%. Almost two in three sales over the past several decades have been a friend, a relative, a former coworker, a past client, in other words, your social network, or someone referred by that social network, referred by your friend, relative, or past client. But there's a change going on in the industry. Even though you're referred to someone, nine out of ten of those clients, before they ever pick up the phone and call you or email you, are checking you out online. So you have to make sure your profile is right online. So one thing I'm going to, uh, one thing you're going to want to do is fix your reputation to the best of your ability. I'm going to give you a bunch of websites today to write down. The first one is to check your online profile, and that's in the middle of the screen there. One customer plus dot repgrader dot com. One customer plus dot r e p g r a d e r dot com. Uh, and if you do that and plug in your business and address uh, and your phone number. It'll come up with where it's listed correctly and where it's not. Now, I pulled a couple of Century 21s, and there were a lot of them that had uh, mistakes and errors all over the place, from incorrect phone numbers to incorrect addresses and so on. So you want to try and fix your online profile. I would start there to make sure when people are finding you online, they're finding the right information. So getting back to what we're really here for, which is how do we attract and identify prospects? Do you realize that only 2% of visitors to a good, solid real estate website that have, has an IDX feed and has lots of data on it actually ever identify themselves by asking for information or calling you or sending you an email? Only 2%. That means that 98 out of every 100 visitors to your website go away without ever contacting you. And if you get two potential leads out of every 100 visitors, and the typical realtor converts around 4%, of those leads into eventual buyers or sellers. That means you've got a chance of selling a property to one out of every, I don't know, 1,200 people who are using your site for information. That's terrible, so let's try and fix it. What we need to do is to create a reason for potential buyers and sellers to identify themselves to you and funnel them into a system to collect those leads and follow up. So we need to build a campaign that entices them to identify themselves one way or another and build a follow-up system that responds to those leads on our behalf. We're going to funnel them from leads to prospects on down. This is the lead process. 
there are a lot of strangers out there in the marketplace. We're going to try and attract them. We're going to do that with some online advertising. We're going to put keywords into our websites to try and get us to rank higher. We're going to do some search engine optimization. We're going to put blog posts out there. We're going to put stuff on social media. That gives us visitors. Those visitors we need to convert to working with us. So we have specific landing pages that have great information on them, great content. We've got specialty websites set up. We've got forms and lead capture systems built into our websites. And then we've got a call to action to get them to raise their hand and identify themselves as possible buyers or sellers in the market. And we take it from there as a lead to try and close them. We use uh, Facebook pixels to keep pushing ads in front of them. We use uh, retargeting. We put them into our contact relationship management software and we follow up with them with emails and phone calls. And we use autoresponders to get back to them quickly. And that turns them hopefully into customers where we're able to find them the right property or sell their property in a timely fashion. And then we're going we're to deliver exceptional service. We're going to maintain ongoing contact with valued content. And we're going to build advocates for our business that are going to refer us more and more and more business. Does that sound like a plan? That's our real estate business, by the way. That's our real estate practice in a nutshell. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we've got to do is create a reason for them to contact us. And we're doing this so that we can actually search online our target audience on Facebook or Google. But we've got to create some sort of capture system first. So we're going to create a stealth business page. And then we're going to create a targeted ad. Now, stealth business page is not your website. Please keep in mind that if you put out ads everywhere that says, search my, ha my uh, website, sallywildman.com, to find houses, they're going to ignore that because they're going to go to Zillow and Realtor.com and Century21.com. If you put out, click here for a free market analysis, they're probably not going to do that. They're going to go to Zillow and look up the price of their house. So we have to create some other uh, system that is going to entice them to identify themselves. So we create what's called a stealth business page, and I'll show you some examples in a minute. Then we're going to create a targeted ad that we're going to push through Google and through Facebook to our target audience that we're going to create. And once they look at that targeted ad, we want them to click on it, go to our stealth business page, and we on that page we need a call to action, some reason for them to identify themselves to us, something they have to have. And that landing page, that stealth business page, is going to then entice them to, to identify themselves. Now we're going to start following up. We're going to create a follow-up campaign. And hopefully many of you were at our, our workshop yesterday on follow-up campaigns, how to design them, how to build them. And if not, uh, we will have that as a recording available. So those are the steps we're going to take. So let's step through it. Step one is to have a stealth business page. Now, again, this is not your entire website. It can be a page on your website that has a direct URL, a direct link right to that page, or it can be a, a single page site, or it can be something on your Facebook page, but something that's a highly targeted landing page because you're going to try and drive business to that. Again, they're not going to click on it just to search for homes. But they might click on it if you have an automated home value tool that's going to tell them what their house is worth. They'll compare that with Zillow. They'll probably click on that. If they want to find hot foreclosures fast, if you run an ad, a very targeted specific ad, and you get that out there, they might click for that free hot foreclosures list. Uh, veterans, if you're targeting veterans, might want more information on mortgage benefits or how to buy a house using VA benefits. What about divorce in your home? What should you do in the case of a divorce if you own a property? How about first-time home buyers? Free report, the 10 deadly mistakes you can make when buying a home in this area and how to avoid them. This free report prepared by industry insiders can save you thousands of dollars when buying your first home. Or how to buy with zero down payment. Click for details. Or something specific, different than Zillow. Search every horse farm for sale in the area. Search every historic home for sale in the area. Search every beachfront home or every waterfront home or every lakefront home in the area. But very specific targeted page that leads them back to your stealth business page. And again, that's a landing page, not a full website, although you can create a one-page website. Now your next step is you've got the page set up. You have to create an ad to drive business to that page. And that ad will deliver a customer to the page with a clear headline. If you're looking for first-time buyers, free first-time buyer's guide, the 10 deadly mistakes a buyer can make when buying their first house and how to avoid them. It could save you thousands of dollars. Click for your free copy. 
how to find a how to buy a house with no money down in the Houston area, in the Chicago area, in the Detroit area. Bring it down to the local level. And the ad should look like the landing page. So you've got a targeted ad after you've created the page. Next step is to create a call to action. So those 10 deadly mistakes, you might give them the first five. For the other five, they have to click for more details. They have to give you at least an email address so that you have a way of following up with them. You have to have a, reason, a way to get them to identify themselves as possible buyers so that you can start going back to them with information. And going back to them with information might be using your contact relationship management software to send them something regularly, send them a, a series of emails if you get their phone number to call them as well. Or it may be that you're going to use that email address and you're going to put it into one of the remarketing systems through Google or through Facebook or through AdWorks, let's say, and try and make sure that we're pushing ads to their screen in their news feeds. And we'll cover that in a couple of minutes. Now, one thing I want to mention, 70, I'm going to start with Facebook, but 71% of adults use Facebook on a daily basis in the United States. That number just stuns me. But it's a fact. It comes from the Pew Research Center. By the way, 75% of all statistics are made up by the lecturer right in the middle of the, of the hallway. They do it themselves. But anyways, this is by the Pew Research Center. 71% of adults use Facebook daily. So if we apply this to Facebook, we want to use Facebook as a tool to get in front of potential clients. And Facebook has a wealth of information because they know a lot about every customer, every person who's on Facebook. And some of the things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to create a business page for Facebook, which we're going to show you a little bit about how to do. We're going to tell you to create regular posts, both personal and business. And we want you to start paid advertising campaigns to try and target the audience you want to select. And then once you start building that audience, we're going to use pixel technology and remarketing campaigns to try and bring people back over and over and over again. Now, there are lots of things you can do for free on Facebook. You can share listings from your Zap website or from the Central21.com site. And if you're sharing it from your account there, it's going to show up with you. Somebody clicks on it. doesn't even have to be your listing. Somebody clicks on it. It goes back to you on, uh, on Central21.com or on Zap.com. Uh, you can share listings from YouTube. You can share your unique property websites. And if you're not doing this, you're making a huge mistake. And we've talked about this over the last couple of days, where you need to get your uh, client, your home seller, to share the, that unique property website to all of his social network, all of his sphere of influence, and ask them to share it as well, because we want to get that message out there, and we want to build through their social networks as well as our own. And we can run ads. And we can also do some indirect reminders on Facebook, start a conversation, create posts uh, that solicit engagement, and share blog articles from Central 21 and from your own site and some from other places, and put testimonials up there. There's a lot of things you can do with Facebook. We're looking at advertising. For those of you who are not using this effectively, uh, we're, develop we're designing a unique property website for every single property that gets listed. You need to post this on Facebook, and you need to get your clients to post them as well, because it's going to uh, increase your influence over the marketplace. Now, I talked about business pages. This is an example of a business page, which has, and by the way, does this look a little better than some of yours? This has a lot of keys in that are going to get people to identify themselves as possible buyers or sellers. This happens to be an agent in um, Canada with Century 21 Millennium. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you in a couple of minutes about where you can go to build one of these. This particular website page on Facebook gives them the ability to identify themselves if they're thinking about buying or selling. It gives them a payment calculator, which means they're going to come back periodically to check things out. It gives you something on finding a home, something on selling a home. And again, you can apply the same ideas to this, how to buy a home with no money down. Might be a call to action on this page. Now, if you want to design something like this, we do have a vendor that's building these. and They look fantastic. And I will get you that information for anybody who has interest. You want to make sure you put something like this together for your business page. And that's step one. Now, if you want to create Facebook ads... There's a three-step process to doing it, and it might be a little counterintuitive from those of us with a sales uh, background. Normally, we start with an ad, and then we figure out where we're going to send it. When you are building a Facebook ad, and I'm going to step you through the sequence of events in a couple of minutes, you start by defining a campaign. What's your objective in a campaign? That's where you start. 
You have one sales pitch, one funnel you're creating at a time. The second step is to create an ad set, and this is a little uh, counterintuitive as well. You're not actually creating an ad here. What you're doing is defining your target audience. Who is it you want to target? What zip codes? What areas? What uh, demographic are you looking for? Because keep in mind, we don't necessarily want to pay to send an ad out to everybody, do we? We want to send it out maybe to people between 18 and 70 that might own a house if we're trying to find home sellers. If we want to find home buyers, somebody who might be renting or might be a move-up buyer. But we define that target audience of who we're looking for. And then we go down to the ad level and we actually design the ad. So we're moving backward. <clears throat> we create the ad la last and then we try and um, create who the potential prospects are for that ad. So let me give you an example. Let's say that we specialize in selling horse farms and we want to target that audience. First thing we do is define our campaign, which is to get people to click on our ad, which is going to take them to a landing page on our site that talks about the mistakes they can make when buying horse farms or how to finance horse farms or something else. Then we create an ad set that defines our target audience. We want to somehow pick that audience of people who have horses. Once we've defined the audience, the likely group that we're going to work with, we want to design an ad to resonate with that group so they're going to click on it. I'm going to step you through the ads, but let me talk about other possible prospect ideas. You can do almost anything. Let's look at campaigns for life events that we can use on Google or on Facebook. We want to, and by the way, Facebook knows everything you're doing. Supposedly, Facebook knows that you're going to get a divorce around six months before you actually get a divorce because they see what you're doing online. They're tracking everything that you're doing. So they're keeping up to date and they're able to uh, target individuals who are likely candidates when you're planning on doing something. So what are life events? When somebody gets married, they're likely to buy a house. When somebody has a new baby, they're likely to buy a house. And when somebody gets a divorce, they're likely to sell a house. So let's take divorce for a second. You know, 1.2 million couples file for divorce every year. 61% will list their homes for sale. That means the United States next year, or this year, there are 732,000 potential listings, and you should get them. So we have to figure out how we're going to target that audience, how we're going to get in front of them, and how we're going to push our ad to them. So first step, again, is to create a stealth business page. We're going to write a quick article, or we're going to steal something from somewhere, but we're going to write a quick article on why you should sell your home in a divorce and some of the legal reasons for selling your home in a divorce. That's a landing page, or it's a targeted uh, site. You put together a few paragraphs on it, and I'll tell you how you do this. If you don't have any place to put one, you're going to log into your 21 online account, which you, everybody here has, and you're going to go down to My C21 Sites under the Tools menu. I know I'm talking fast, but we have limited time. My C21 Sites, and you're able there to create a content page, a generic content page, and that generic content page, they'll give you lots of different formats you can put it in, you can add some photos, you can add some bullet points, and you can just import all the data, and it's going to create a unique URL for that web page. And that unique URL for that web page is what you're going to use to put as a landing page for your ad. Now you might think this is crazy, but how do you how are you going to target the audience of divorcing couples through Facebook? Well, let me give you one idea. When somebody is in trouble in their relationship, they change their status from married to it's complicated. That's one way of doing it. But again, we can put in different ideas or different, um, I should say we are going to let Facebook's ability to um, uh, target people based on their behaviors and their interests help us to select that target audience. And you might run a little ad, what to do with your house in a divorce or a picture of a house being broken. And then we try and attribute the areas that we work in to be the ones that we really want to click on our ad. We're going to lower it to our level. Veterans are the same thing. Here's another target audience. Veterans are looking for a zero down payment loan. You do the same thing. You create a targeted landing page on your MyC21 site. You've got a unique URL. And now let's go back and build an ad. So we're going to create a Facebook ad in five minutes. We're going to go into our Facebook account. You're going to pull down the upper right-hand uh, menu, and you're going to click on Create Page, or I mean, sorry, Create Ad. And you start the process of creating an ad. 
And on creating an ad, you're going to see on the left-hand side exactly what I said earlier, the three steps, campaign, ad, set, and ad. And campaign is the objective that you're looking for. And ad set is actually your target audience that you're looking to hit. And then the ad is what you're actually creating. So let's bring this in a little closer. And these are the marketing object objectives they start with because Facebook is going to help you to hit the right audience based on what your objectives are. There are three columns. Under the awareness column, there is brand awareness, and that is to get people to know you and your personal brand. Uh, local awareness, there's reach. Reach, in my opinion, is for large companies to hit a broader audience. In the middle, you've got consideration, and there's traffic and engagement, which are variations of trying to get people to click on your link, and maybe that's the one we want to hit, and maybe share that li link. App installs, if you'd like to try and get your Zap app and get someone to download it, that might be the, the version that you use lead generation, and then under conversions on the right-hand side, you have something uh, called installing a Facebook pixel, and I'll be talking about that in a little bit. So once we decide what our campaign is going to do, who we're looking for, we name it, and then we start creating our target audience, defining that target audience. Do we want everyone in the United States? Do we want everyone in Canada? Do we want just our local area? For real estate, you probably want just your local area. What age range do we want? Do we want all genders? Do we want all languages? And then we start adding detailed targeting. And it's going to give us some sample, some ideas, some examples of what uh, we might want to do. We can add demographics, we can add interests, or we can add behaviors. And it will give us suggestions. So let's go back and say we're trying to target horse farm buyers and sellers in a particular location. So we can actually, if we want to, create a custom audience and upload a customer file if we want to just target certain people. Let's say we get a list of everybody that we know that's in our database. We can upload that and just hit those people on Facebook instead. We can base it on certain website traffic. We can base it on all, all sorts of things. But let's go back to this horse farm idea. So we pick a location that we're looking at. We, instead of drawing radius, we pick certain uh, zip codes that we want to hit. And then we pick our age group, our gender, and then down at the bottom, we want under demographics, we want just homeowners because we're going to target people who want to sell, let's say, horse farms. And then we put under uh, the um, search menu, horse, and it gives us lots of people who have interests or job titles. Do we want people who are into horseback riding or horse training or horse racing or horse breeding? You can do the same thing with farms. Start building a list of all the different possible target audiences that you're looking for. Once you do that, you want to look for other suggestions. Do we want somebody who's likely to move? Do we want renters? Do we want owners? What are we looking for? We try and build that list out. And once we've done that, we want to uh, we put in what our daily budget is. Your daily budget might be five bucks a day, and you might run your ad continuously starting today. Pretty easy to put together. And you can let Facebook pick the amount that's being bid, or you can set it manually. Next step is to create the ad. You can create a carousel, which is scrolling images. You can create a single image ad, a video ad, a slideshow, or a canvas. Now, because of time, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. But we're going to put an ad in with a picture of a farm. We're going to put on the ad, search farms for sale. Now, you can put very, very few words on a Facebook ad. You have to actually write the ad above and below it. It'll kick it out and, and cancel it if it's not mostly a picture. So we're going to put in Search Pennsylvania and New Jersey Farms for Sale, and then we're going to write an ad at the bottom, and we're going to link them back to our website URL, which is on the screen. Our website URL is going to bring them back to that if they click on the ad. You can do the same thing if you're trying to find people who want to sell their houses. How much is your home worth? Instant home valuation. Go to zaphomevalue.com and you'll get three different estimates of your home's value. It's another way of trying to attract people. And in that case, if we're building a demographic audience, we want homeowners. We want homeowners that might be likely to sell or might be in a certain uh, uh, category or range. Now, once we've gotten through some setup of how to create some ads, I want to talk a little bit real quickly about Facebook pixels. Let me explain it this way. Have you bought a plane ticket recently, let's say, to get to Las Vegas? And have you noticed, since you bought the plane ticket, ads are popping up on your screen about travel, 
uh, from travel sites, from hotels, from places in Las Vegas, from shows in Las Vegas, because they know where you were going and what you were searching, because Facebook is on constantly on your computer, and Google is on constantly, and it's tracking what you're doing and where you're going. One of the things that Facebook Pixel IDs do is you can place a bit of code that it creates on your websites, and it'll track every time someone goes to your website, and it'll capture all that information. It'll figure out who that person is based on their profile on Facebook, and it's going to start pushing that ad to your screen, to whoever screen it is that's been on your site, and that's called a Facebook Pixel. It creates a little snippet of code. This happens to be a snippet of code. It's go, you're going to copy that and you're going to paste it into your website, or if you have a developer that does websites, you're going to paste it, have them paste it into your website, real small snippet of code. And then once somebody has visited your site once, it starts going back and pushing that site over and over and over again. And then you're able to track how often that ad is being run to people who've been to your site and haven't yet come back or how often people are clicking on it and coming back to the site again. It's a real interesting program. And by the way, you can create a target audience for anybody who visits your site. You can create an audience for people who visit specific pages. So let's say you've got a website where you've got one page on farms. So you may want to have a pixel with ads associated with it that are just about farms. Somebody who's getting divorced, we've got a page on divorce. We might want a pixel set up just for people getting divorced and keep pushing that ad to anybody who visited that page. Keep going back and back and back to them with it. This is the same way if you visit Home Depot online and you go and look at Weber Grills, why Weber Grills start showing up on your screen from all over the place. It's because the specific pixel that was saved on Home Depot's site under Weber Grills was different than the overall site. You may be able to set up a, an ad campaign based on people who came to your site and haven't come back in a long time. It'll track that as well and start pushing something a little different. You might have a slightly different ad that you send to those people. By the way, we've got a special deal right now or something else that'll catch their attention. And when you're placing ads, you can place them on Facebook, of course, or you can add it to their audience network. There's also Instagram and Messenger. And the audience network, by the way, like I said, if you have uh, ads anywhere, that you see coming up on your screen. They're based on what you've looked at before, but it's because somebody is reselling that information back to the back to the uh, business to push ads to them. And that can be done on a digital vice. And that person can be tracked and ads sent to them either by the advertiser ID or by the device that's, be that's being used because they track all of that. Now let's skip ahead real quick to Google remarketing. There are two types of marketing, actually three types of marketing on Google that we'll talk about real briefly. One is the search network and the other is the display network. I think most of us are familiar with the search network. When you run any sort of search in Google or in any of the um, uh, search network, and that includes uh, AOL search and many other search engines, if you run an ad in those, it'll, if you run a search in those, it's going to come up with some ads on top. And you can pay to be one of those ads. You can pay on a per-click basis. You can pay to be on it based on the number of impressions you make. But you can pay to be part of that. And to make that happen, you go to adwords.google.com. You set your daily budget. Again, you're going to set the location you want the uh, client to come from. You want to say where you want it uh, displayed, just the search network like Google Search and AOL Search, or do you want it in the display network, which we'll talk about in a minute. What keywords are you looking to hit? What searches are people doing that you want to entice them to click on your site? And how much you're willing to bid, and then you write your ad. So for example, under keywords, you might put in commercial property if you're selling commercial real estate. Or you might bring it down to a local level and say you want to put in Tennessee commercial property, or Kentucky commercial property, or just Chicago commercial property. You want to try and put in as many keywords as possible that are going to fit the possible search terms that people are going to come up with. And then you write a re really short ad that's going to show up. The Google Display Network is a different method to match ads to clients. The content on the page matches what your target audience might want. Sometimes it's demographic, or sometimes it's what we call remarketing. Because you went to a certain page, that certain page continues to follow you. Just like a pixel did on Facebook, Google will do the same thing. 
and it can create brand awareness in the display network. Now here's an example of a uh, news feed. This one happened to have come from Yahoo. But you'll see, uh, you'll see news articles, and in the middle of the news articles are something that looks like a news article, but it's really not. It says sponsored. 15 perfectly timed images captured. The photographer captured these images at perfectly timed moments. Now people click on that because it's interesting. Here's another one. Uh, Thailand bear dies, that's a news article. Americans calm down, you don't need a visa to go to Europe, that's a news article. And then photos from jaw-dropping do actresses from the past. It's a sponsored ad. It's something that someone's going to click on. And if they click on it, you're going to see something about the 50 stunningly beautiful actresses. But look at the ads along the sides. Now this happened to come from, an ad, from a search that I ran. I was looking at cars. So over on the left-hand side are cars. I was preparing to come here today. So I was looking up different contact relationship management software programs at the moment. And because I ran that search, it's pushing an ad on that to me. And I bought plane tickets. And so Marriott Rewards, who I am a member of, sent me an ad for that too. They're paying to have those show up, or they're paying if I click on it. That's Google Remarketing, and that is Google Display Network. The way you do that is you go to adwords.google.com. You pull down the Campaigns button. You click on Plus Campaign. You might want to click on Display Network Only to create one. And then very similar to the Facebook setup, do you want to create this ad to build awareness, to build influence, or to drive an action to buy on your website? Now we probably want to have somebody visit our websites. So we're going to pick the middle one. And then where do we want the buyer to come from? Do we want the entire United States or do we want to bring it down to our, our area? And we're going to call it a horse farm buyer campaign. What language is it? What bid strategy are we using? And we can target the ads by certain keywords that people put in or keywords that are on a particular person's site. We can target people based on their interests. If people seem to show a certain interest in something based on their searches on Google, Google's going to target those. Or we can do different uh, types of targeting methods, including showing ads on uh, pages where competitors have been or if someone's done a competitor's ad. And then they, we upload our images. It'll allow us to put an ad together with images pretty easily, and so on. And then the last thing I'm going to mention is Google Remarketing, is where we're going to tag everything that we do. So we're going to create a tag just like we did with a Facebook pixel. And we're going to add that, that code, that language, to our websites so that it can keep pushing the ad to visitors long after they leave. Again, 2% of visitors ever contact you. So once they've seen the site, we want to keep pushing that site back to them, and specifically the pages back to them that they were on, to try and get them to come back again and again until they actually identify themselves. And there's one last uh, uh, group that we can go with. There are several resellers that will put this out there. Central one has a deal right now with AdWorks. And AdWorks allows you to uh, push ads through both Google Remarketing and through Facebook and try and get them out in front of clients as well. And that's been a pretty successful ad at a relatively inexpensive price. Thanks for watching us today. I hope you're enjoying our programs. Until next time, this is Lauren Keim with Real Estate's Next Level Training. Make the most of every day. And thanks again.